So it was just announced that Andrew Yang just made the third round of the Democratic debates. So in this video, not only are we gonna be talking about how Andrew Yang is the only candidate who seems to care about mental health, but we're gonna talk about how he made this third round of debates and the other things that he stands for, so make sure that you stay tuned. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, I take a wide range of subjects and try to see what lessons we can pull from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. And something that I'm extremely, extremely passionate about is mental health. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you're just now meeting me, I do care so much about mental health that I actually write some books on it. I'm not a licensed therapist or a psychologist. I'm a certified life coach and I've been clean and sober for seven years. I've battled depression as well as addiction and anxiety and I write books about that stuff. So check out my website www.therewiredsoul.com. It's in the description and the pinned comment down below. If you like to read, I got ebooks and audiobooks for you. All right. So yeah, anyways, let's talk about Andrew Yang. I did a video um, a while back about my first impressions of Andrew Yang and I've been kind of following him, you know, on Twitter and in the media and everything just to kind of get a feel for him. Something that I want you guys to hold me accountable for, I need to read his book. I need to read this dude's book. If you've read it, let me know down in the comments below how you liked it and your thoughts on it and things. No spoilers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyways, I, yeah, I think I'm going to go um, check it out from the library and try to knock it out in the next week or two and maybe do like a book review on it. But I really want to get him to know him more. So I've watched, you know, both rounds of debates so far. And yeah, like the first round of debates, Andrew Yang was kind of screwed. All right. Like he had the least amount of talking time. And then it came out after that his mic was being cut out. All right. And it's crazy because then he ended up trending for that on Twitter. And we're going to be talking about Andrew Yang on Twitter because he's doing it like a boss. But anyways, what I found interesting in the second round of debates was that he still was at the very bottom for the amount of talking time that he had. And that's really fascinating to me because he's doing so well, but even though he had the least amount of talking time in both debates, he still just made the third round of debates. He has a massive amount of support. You might be part of that Yang gang. And let's talk about how Andrew Yang is seemingly the only candidate who cares about mental health. So here's kind of my philosophy on politics, my views, my opinions. Um, we all care about certain things, all right? For example, if you're a business owner, you probably look at candidates and see what their policies are for small businesses and things like that. If you're a woman or you care about women's rights, you're probably looking at where the candidates stay uh, or, or state they're at with abortion laws and things like that. Um, and there's a lot of issues in this country. So I think for me personally, it's important to kind of prioritize, you know, your own values and then really look and see what the candidates are saying. And my number one thing is mental health. So when I listen to these candidates talk, I try to hear if they're talking about mental health. And here's one of the main reasons why this is such a concern for me going into the upcoming elections next year. In 2016, leading up to that, you had so many candidates who were talking about like the opioid epidemic, all right? I'm a recovering opioid addict. I have seven years clean and sober. I've worked in addiction treatment, mental health care and addiction health care in this country absolutely sucks. And you saw a lot of candidates talking about the opioid epidemic and things that they were gonna do, but nothing's happened. Like even Trump talked about it, but nothing has happened, right? And this is something that we see with politicians. They pander, right? When they go up to the Northeast, they'll talk about the opioid epidemic because that is one of the major conversations because there's so many overdose deaths up there, right? So anyways, mental health, addiction, and all of that is something that I'm very tuned in on. So I listen to these candidates. So even though Andrew Yang has had the least amount of time in both Democratic debates, he has brought up mental health each time, all right? And like, I think it's important that we really watch candidates and we watch other people in our life, see what they stand for, see what topics are on their mind. And Andrew Yang, in my opinion, he's the only one that I see bringing up mental health on a regular basis without being prompted, all right? So what that tells me 
as a voter that that is something in the forefront of his mind and that's something that I am very passionate about. Now, don't get me wrong, all right? Before the hate comments come in, I'm not saying that nobody else cares about mental health, but it doesn't seem to be in the forefront of their uh, of their thoughts, right? Like when they're prompted or asked questions, you know, some of them say some good things and things like that. But my question is, when they get into office, what are they going to make a priority? And trust me, this country has a million issues, all right? But I think mental health needs to be the number one priority because it helps with you know, the anger problems that we have in the United States, right? It's so divided and people are just angry. People are so angry. I would say the majority of people in the United States, I would love to do a poll on this, they're either one of two things, angry or miserable, all right? And that's something that we need to take into account. Now, there are plenty of things that are contributing to that, like the economy and all that kind of stuff, but if we start at the top and teach people how to improve their mental health, regardless of how much money they make and things like that, like this is a step in the right direction. Because some of us, we have to humble ourselves and take the opportunities that are presented for us and things like that, but when we get entitled and think we deserve all these things, right? then it's affecting our mental health. And that's just my opinion on it. So I appreciate that Andrew Yang talks about this quite a bit. Now, if you're part of the Yang gang or you follow anything about Andrew Yang, he talks about the $1,000 a month, which is the freedom dividend. And let me tell you this, like when I see people talking about how this is impossible or anything like, or for example, when like Bernie Sanders, who I'm gonna talk about in a minute, um, when he talks about, you know, free college and, you know, Medicare for all and everything like that. I need to do a whole video on Medicare for all, or maybe on my podcast. But anyways, when people are like, where are we gonna get that money? Where are we gonna get that money? Like, please. All right, like when you realize how much money we are spending on offensive wars, all right, when you understand what our military budget is, like, a fraction of that, like a small tiny piece, like we could take funds from that and take care of so many things and still have the most bad military in the world. All right, so like, don't even hit me with that mess. Like, where's the money gonna come from? Like, there is plenty of money. We are just putting it in the wrong places. But anyways, talking about Andrew Yang and the $1,000 a month and the Freedom Dividend. One of the best books on depression out there, all right, is from an unlicensed person, some of you get that joke, Johan Hari, okay? Get the book Lost Connections. He's an investigative journalist. His first book, Chasing the Scream, was about the addiction epidemic around the world. This uh, next book that he wrote, Lost Connections, is all about the depression problem around the world. He talks about anxiety as well, but anyways, he focuses on a ton of different studies. So I did a video about this a long time ago that got like absolutely no views, but they actually did a study in Canada where they gave people money, right? Kind of like the freedom dividend and they saw massive drops in things like depression, things like anxiety. They also saw massive drops in uh, health issues like heart disease because people weren't as stressed out. So that freedom dividend, when I hear Andrew Yang talk about it, he also mentions the mental health aspect of it. And you have people who oppose that and say, oh no, this will just make people lazy or people are just gonna spend that on drugs or stupid things or whatever. But the studies they talk about in Lost Connections prove otherwise, all right? When people feel more safe and secure and comfortable, they're more likely to go out there and get jobs. But one of the things is, is that they're going to get jobs that they actually like and employers have to be better too because people don't have to settle for working at a crappy place. Like, it is such an amazing study. I'm gonna see if I can find a, uh, uh, an article to link down in the description below, like I will. Like, don't worry, I got you, baby, all right? But anyways, that's why I, I just love what Andrew Yang's doing. So how he made the third round of debates, here's my theory on it. This dude is plugged in and connected, all right? Like I follow most of the Democratic candidates on Twitter and most of them, like when you look at their Twitter accounts, you're like, okay, is this really them tweeting or did they tell somebody what to tweet? Right, And with Andrew Yang, you can tell it's him. 
not only is it him who's tweeting out, but he's also replying to tweets. I just saw him reply to Casey Neistat and stuff like that, but he interacts and gets involved with people. And like, that's why, although he didn't get that much airtime on the Democratic debates, like, he, he just made it to the third round and was able to raise the funds because this dude is an entrepreneur, he's a businessman, he understands marketing and he understands the importance of connecting with your audience. So regardless of what the mainstream media uh, media does, like cutting out his mic or you know being against his like freedom dividend and all those other things, he is plugged in with people like you and me. All right, aside from that, he also just went on the Ace3 Ace3 podcast which is huge. I remember seeing Roberto Blake mention that on Twitter like a month ago and then it happened. So I'm not saying Roberto helped get those wheels in motion, but I wouldn't be surprised. But anyways, like Andrew Yang getting on these kind of smaller level um, podcasts and everything, like, you know, Bernie Sanders was just on Joe Rogan, but I think it's important that Andrew Yang is connecting with the other people in the community and not just going after like the biggest ones for the biggest exposure and all that. Like like this kind of micro marketing is huge. And that's what I think Bernie had, you know, in, in 2016 or 2015 before he kind of got screwed by the primaries. But anyways, my final thoughts on this. Um, for now, for now, I will be doing updates and I do want to do more videos on politics. So make sure you let me know down in the comments below. If there's things you want me to touch on. But anyways, in my opinion, I, I still like personally, I think Bernie has a great chance. Maybe Elizabeth Warren, I would prefer Bernie though. But in my like dream team scenario, it'd be Bernie Sanders for his experience, right? And everything that he stands for, boom, you get Andrew Yang as the vice president, I think those two dudes would make some amazing things happen. Um, but yeah, like just when it comes to Andrew Yang, like it's just, even though he, he understands all this stuff and he has some great views and great ideas, in my opinion, he just doesn't have the experience of somebody like Bernie Sanders. So that's why, you know, I would kind of put Bernie and then Andrew Yang. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know who you're rooting for. And if you're on the other side of the aisle, that's cool too. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, like, although I lean more towards the liberal side, like, I am just somebody who looks at policies and what aligns with my beliefs, all right? But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and I will be doing follow-ups. So feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter if there's any topics that you feel like I should cover on here or even on my podcast, just let me know because you guys, I'll tell you this, I'll say this at the end of every video about politics, like you have no right to complain about a damn thing in this country unless you're following the candidates and what they're about and then get your butt out there and vote. Because if you don't, you have absolutely no right to, cl uh, to complain about anything. Go out there, vote, and also be educated about what these candidates actually stand for. All right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you want some mental health books, make sure you check out the description and the pinned comment down below. Visit my website. Got them all over there, all right? But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody who gets my books and all that kind of good stuff. You're all awesome, too. All right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.